everyone. It is Marissa. I am known here on YouTube and over on Instagram as The Crafty Heifer. Today I am coming to you because we are doing Christmas premieres so that no one has to be alone at Christmas. I want to say right off the top thank you so much Pippa Brown for arranging this. This is the second year that we've done it. It was a huge hit last year and a lot of people have requested to uh, do it again. And so Pippa has spent weeks now putting together all of these creators. This is a three day premiere so that if you are by yourself on Christmas, you have someone to hang out with, someone to watch and all of that kind of stuff. Now, I'm gonna apologize for the glare off my glasses because I'm out of contacts and I have to have the light <laughs> because it is gloomy and rainy and it's like the perfect December day outside to be real honest without snow. This is what I love. I love to be here in warm, cuddled up, all of that kind of stuff. So, um, what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be doing a stash dive in all of my cross stitch stuff. Um, I figured this would be something fun that I could actually talk about for an hour <laughs> um, because my life is pretty boring. I've been going to work and I've been going home. Not a lot has been happening. And so we are going to go through what I have in my stash. Now, I have not organized this in any way. We're going to be opening bags and I will tell you which ones I made, which ones were purchased or given to me. Um, and then I will show you the project in there. We'll talk about it. I may even decide whether I actually want to work on it or not because I bought a lot of cross stitch stuff this year and I'm not ashamed of it, but I'm thinking that by the time I actually get to it, I may not want to work on it quite as much as I did when I purchased it. So if we have some that I am like, no, I don't think I'm going to do this, then I will probably set it aside so that I can go ahead and purge. I'm in this mood to like clean my house and purge all the things and get rid of stuff that I haven't used in forever. So, but we're going to start with uh, my Christmas and birthday gift from my good friend Kim. Uh, Kim is a new stitchy friend that I made this year. She lives very close to me and so it's been really nice to have someone to meet up with this year and to go and do some things. Those of you that were around when I did my St. Jude pattern, Kim is the one that stitched our model sampler for our St. Jude pattern that we did this year. Um, she and I are working together for the 2021 pattern, so it will be coming once all of that is set up. So probably mid-year, probably in the summer is when we'll be ready to release that. We're very excited about it. We were brainstorming about it last night. So she went ahead and bought me my, brought me, excuse me, my Christmas and birthday gift. And I have to say, like, I'm, she spoiled me. Definitely I got spoiled. And so the first thing is this bag. Now, it is a very Texas bag, which I absolutely love. It's got the boots and the heifers, or those are probably bulls. Um, the cactus, it's got the blue bonnets and Texas and all of that kind of stuff in there. And then the inside fabric is a little bit different. So it is a clear front bag. And then the inside fabric has towns in Texas on it. So I absolutely love this. It is a square bag. So my Q snaps will fit in here, which I'm super happy with. And it came with a little accessories bag as well. And I've got all of my other little accessories that she got me. You guys, like I really got spoiled. <laughs> So, let's start off with these little things. So, these are, I'd seen her use these. And they're magnetic on this side. And then they've got the, the loop, as you can see. You can use these as cord wranglers. You can use these, um, she uses them to put around her, excuse the table bump. She uses them to put around her Q-snap. So, instead of using the thread spools, the thread holders, you know what you guys know what I'm talking about that I use all the time. I could actually use this to wrangle the fabric. And if you have a whole lot of fabric, these will probably work a little bit better. And they're very strong magnets. So, as you can see, they're very strong magnets. So, I think these are going to work really well. And I got quite a few of them. So, I will have plenty to use on several projects. So, that was the first thing. The second thing that she got is this little card. This is made by Nuts About Needle Minders. I'm not sure exactly where you can find these. I think she got this off Etsy, but don't quote me on that. 
but I love, it's a little sewing, a little uh, cookie tin. So, you know, the joke is that, you know, if you go to grandma's house, this could have cookies or it could have sewing supplies. And most of the time it had sewing supplies. And this does actually open. So, and they did give you an extra magnet. There's a magnet on the back and they give you an extra one on the inside. But it does open up. So I can use this as an ORT container when I travel. Or I can use this to hold wax or to hold, you know, trash drills or anything like that. So I can use it as both a needle binder and as a cover binder. The magnet on the back is covered, which I really like because then we don't have to worry about it um, rubbing off on the fabric. It says these are neodymium magnets. Uh, please keep these out of reach of children, pets, and electrical devices. Please use caution when joining. They are fragile and may shatter. Slide the magnets away from each other as opposed to pulling them apart. So there's the little card that that came on. So I thought this was super cute. So I got that. She also got me a set of DMC size 26 tapestry needles. So these are not the pointy ones like I usually use. So just size 26 needles. I can never find these when I go to the store. And so she got me a set because here lately I've been losing all of my needles. I have probably 30. Can't find any of them. So she got me a new set of needles. And then on top of all of that, Plus, she did make me a little ornament. It's over on my tree. I forgot to grab it. I apologize. So excited about this because this is not something I would have purchased for myself more than likely unless I was like spoiling myself. But because I know how expensive these are, I got size 24 and size 26 easy gauge ballpoint needles. So I am very excited for these. I'll be able to use both of those. Sorry about the glare. So yes, size 24 and size 26 or I may have done that backwards, but either way, I have some easy glide, easy guide ball tip needles. There's two that come in each package. I like that the packages are hard plastic so that you can actually, you know, keep them protected. These are only going to be used for like very special projects. I have a feeling because if I lose one of those, I'm probably going to cuss as we, we all would. Okay, so let me get all this back in the bag so that I don't lose any of it right off the top. So yes, so I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to put in here. I do have a Texas project that we'll run into later. But absolutely love. So that was my Christmas and birthday gift combo. All right. So let's just start. I'm going to pull out some bags. So I have one other empty bag. Um, I had purchased this um, off of our DFW cross stitchers groups. They were made um, for that. So they're even labeled DFW cross stitchers down here. I cannot remember. Maybe the if the invoice is still in here. I ordered the medium bag. She ordered the large and I actually needed the large, she wanted the medium, so we just swapped, Kim and I. So these were made by, why can't I remember the name of this shop? I'll put it down in the description box below. Um, but either way, it is also a clear front bag. I haven't started a project in here yet. There it is, let's see. Vintage SoGal. So there's her information there. Um, I knew I knew the name of that shop. So this is what the back looks like. It's Texas fabric. So I now have two Texas bags, but these were sold exclusively in the DFW cross stitchers group. And Kim and I just, we swapped sizes. Um, so I got that one. Okay, first project, and I'm pretty sure I've started on some of these and some of them I haven't. This is one of the bags that I made. This fabric was found at uh, Walmart. My sister found this fabric for me. This is the one with the purple zipper in it because you'll see this fabric again. Um, okay, so this looks like it is Midnight Way. And I have started Midnight Way. I have not gotten around to finishing it. I have this in an 8 by 11 combo frame. So that is how far I have gotten on it. This is hand dyed fabric by me. 
I hand dyed my own fabric for this because I couldn't find the fabric. And then of course I have the Midnight Way needle minder that came with it. So this is a project I will go back to finishing. I messed up, as you can see right here at the top, all of this is off one complete row. So I'm going to have to completely frog this up here. And I got frustrated about it and decided to just stop working on it instead of going ahead and doing the frogging and then redoing it. So all of this will have to come out. I'll be working on this throughout the year. I really did like this project. Um, that is a frosted pumpkin stitchery pattern. And so that one I will be going back to. Don't mind me because I'm just going to throw some stuff on the floor. Okay, so here is another bag that I made. This is also Walmart fabric. It's got the little cute trucks on it. I think this is probably my favorite fabric that I found this year. Well, my sister found for me. This is... Let's see here. Oh, yes. This is Birds and Bees by Heart and Hand Designs. Um, you'll have to excuse my little sticky note on there. But that is what that looks like. Bless the flowers and the weeds, all the birds and the buzzing of the bees. Or the buzzing bees. I just read that backwards, so kudos for me. So I was supposed to make this for my great niece's first birthday, and I didn't get it done. But she got other presents, don't worry. And then the fabric that I got to do this on is 16 Count Ada in the color Fawn by Picture This Plus. And it looks like this. It's a very parchment-y color. <coughs> Excuse me. So I will eventually get around to that. Doing that one. Okay. Same fabric, different bag. This one has a cream colored zipper in it. And I honestly don't know what's in here. Oh, I do know what's in here. Okay, this is a surprise for me as much as it is for you guys. Because I don't remember what I have in my stash at this point. Because I did not stick to the rule that I have with my diamond paintings of only having five in the house. I just bought what I wanted this year. So this is a Waxing Moon Design Simply Halloween number 128. I was hoping to start this this year. I did not get to it. Um, I will probably be dyeing my own fabric for this one. So that is what that one looks like. You can tell this is an older pattern because this is an actual picture here. And the pattern calls for a 28 count Monster Mash Cashel from PT, from Picture This Plus. So I more than likely will be stitching this on a Lugana or some other even weave. I really have fallen in love with the even weaves. We'll get to another project that I've done even weave because I think that's going to be my jam, you guys. I really think the even weave is going to be my jam. Okay, so this is in one of the famous lemon bags that I had to go back and get this fabric. I absolutely love this fabric. This is the Linen and Threads 2020 Mystery Sample. I have not gotten nearly as far on this one as I wanted to. It is on... I don't remember what this is on. And I did not write any of this down because I'm not that organized. It may be in the bag somewhere. It looks like it's Ada. It's probably 14 count or maybe 18 count. Let's see if I can get it all opened up for you. So this is what I have gotten done. Now, those of you that are working on this project automatically know, and I've talked about this before, my mistake. So these two things I got switched around because I turned my frame the wrong way. So that's how far I've gotten on this. This is now finished. I have not finished it. So this is a project I really have enjoyed stitching on it. I just haven't dedicated a lot of time to it. And this is one that I will be going back to and working on it again. Um, so this is one that I'm hoping to finish in 2020. Nope, let's try that again, 2021. So yes, I will be going back to that one. Another lemon bag. And in here is another bag. 
because you know I just like to double store things okay this project is set aside those are the colors for it this is a project that I found on it's called fresh squeezed lemonade by sapphire mountain handcrafts and I found the pattern on um, Instagram it was a free pattern that they released and so I have I have it saved on the phone and then I just have some tea dyed uh, 18 count Ada to do it on and obviously that is a project that I never started it's a great summer project um, so that's another one that I do still want to do so we'll come back to it this is a project bag that I bought off of one of the buy sell groups on Facebook a very nice lady named Gina made this for me I love that it has the wider bottom I can't remember what this is called I'm sure one of you will know what these corners are called I haven't figured out how to do those yet can't figure it out so this is a it's a very large project bag and in here I have Star Spangled Banner by Willow Hill Samplings so that's what that looks like. I've not gotten very far on this one either. This was supposed to be a Christmas present. It's not going to be a Christmas present. <laughs> so I have done that much of the O. And this is on also 18 count tea dyed Ada. So yeah, not a whole lot at all done on this one. I was not real inspired. I am using... Um, the gentle art cast iron skillet on this one so these are some of my first fancy flosses that i bought um but i haven't just haven't got very far i am enjoying the flosses however so i have quite a bit of work to do on that one luckily the person i'm making this for has an august birthday so if i can get this finished before august it'll be a birthday gift maybe just a year late so that's what's in that bag that is a very well made bag by the way um, this is another bag and a couple of patterns that were given to me to do giveaways with. So I'm just going to set those over to the side. Back to another monster bag. And this pattern in here is Things I Know for Certain. And this is by um, M. Kissa Creations. She has a YouTube channel. And she also has an Etsy shop and she's a fellow Marissa and so we have bonded over that because it doesn't happen very often and so this is from the movie Practical Magic and it's the little quote that Sandra Bullock says at the end this is one of my very favorite Halloween movies and I didn't get to see it this year I was very disappointed it says always throw spilled salt over your left shoulder keep rosemary by your garden gate plant lavender for luck and fall in love whenever you can so I absolutely love that quote. I did not start on this. Um, I did load this with a linen fabric and I started working on it at the retreat and I absolutely hate this fabric. So the fabric is going to probably get passed on to Creative Mayhem because she loves linen and I was not a fan of this fabric. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. I just, my colors were blending and it was not working for me. So I'm going to pass her this fabric and I will choose a different fabric, probably one that I will hand dye myself, um, to start this project on because that linen was not working for me at all. Okay. Let's see here. Back to another truck fabric. So the reason you're seeing duplicates of these fabrics, guys, is because the ones that we got from Walmart came in one yard uh, squares and the way that I size my bags, I can get three bags out of one yard of fabric. And then usually I can do a couple of um, grime guards and some of the floss wranglers as well. Okay. Oh, that's the one we already, we already opened this one. JK. JK. So let me just slide that back in there and we'll keep going. All right, so we have a Christmas bag with some fabric that I've had for many, many, many moons, many years. I think I bought this fabric when I was in college. 
and I don't want to tell you how long it's been since I've been in college so yeah um this should be yes this is what I thought it was okay so this is the um make sure I tell you which company it is Country Cottage Needleworks. This is the Glitter House Village. So I have done the first one, which is, well, not the first one. I've done number five, Glitter House number five, which is the church. And I have finished that one. This is fabric that it's, I believe, 14 count Ada. I found it online and it was a cream color and I hand dyed it. I'm sure some of you will remember this fabric because I was very excited by the way it turned out. But it's just a very long, uh, skinny piece. A fabric and so all of the rest of the village pieces will end up on here as well at least the ones that I have I think I have um, all but like two or three of them so I'm planning to do five total but that is the first one there that I got done during Jolly July and I think I need to go back and obviously work on the snowflake one of them I messed up completely and um, finish up I think there was a couple other snowflakes I didn't quite get on there yet so we've got to go back and fill that kind of stuff in okay this is a Christmas bag loved this fabric it's super cute it says jingle bells jingle bells jingle all the way over the hills and far away dashing through the snow laughing all the way it's got all the lyrics with the red trucks on it so let's see what's in here oh so this one has actually gotten some work on it um, a couple of weeks ago when I went camping. I started working on this one after I finished um, the Thanksgiving one that I was working on. And this says he's making a list, checking it twice. Santa Claus is coming to town by Country Cottage Needleworks. And that is what that one looks like. I started this back during Jolly July and got pretty good progress on the top part. I enjoy this one. This one's a good one to like pick up, work on it for a few days, and then put it away again because you can just jump back in when you come back. Um, this is 18 count uh, tea and coffee dyed Ada that I did in my crock pot. And I'm saving all of the white for last because I really do not like the white. So that's how far I've gotten. So I had this top part done. I had part of, I think I had up to like the CK here. And so put in some more on that. Obviously it will probably not be finished by Christmas. My stitchy bug has kind of abandoned me because I've got a lot of other projects happening right now. And then gearing up for 2021 and getting everything going for um, all of the other stuff that I have going on. I haven't had a lot of time or motivation to stitch. So I'm hoping that once things settle back down and everything is not so urgent that my motivation comes back because I really have enjoyed stitching this year. Okay, one more monster bag. This is a hefty project. Oh, I know which one this is. I love this one. Okay, so let me find the cover page. So this is the Bed and Breakfast Spooky Hollow number one by Little Stitch Girl. And so this is the Spooky Hollow series. This is the only pattern I have. Now, I'm planning on doing this whole village. I believe there's 12 total um to do i'm not making a whole lot of progress this may be like a couple year long project it may take me a couple years to get it all done but i've actually done some really good progress on this one now i need to get some bigger q snaps so i can have some more 8 by 11s because this is a whole lot of fabric and it's wrapped around an 8 by 8 q snap so that's how much i've gotten done as you can see i'm working on the filling in of the cream color of the house and it actually on the picture it looks more cream but the color that it calls for is more of a silver color so it's kind of hard to see so I've gotten that done so far I'm very proud of it and that's my Hamilton needle minder 
that Kim also gave all of us in our stitchy group that we have on Thursday nights um, in the Stitch Life magazine group. Okay, so that is one bucket done. We're just a little under halfway through. So I'm gonna slow down, take a little bit more time to talk about things. Oh, let me put this in here as well. So my patterns and things don't get separated. So, so far, everything that I have opened up, I still plan on stitching. That's always a good thing because I'm one of those, I don't like buying a whole lot because when I come back to it, if I buy things on impulse and then I come back to them, I don't always want to do them as much as I did when I purchased it. So, the good news is all of those I definitely want to do again. All right. So let's see in here, we've got just some patterns, um, some of the fabrics and things like that. There's my pattern for that one. It's a hot mess. I've got to go through and reorganize everything and label bags and do all of that kind of stuff and I just haven't done it yet. So the next one I have is Little House Needleworks. This is Town Church and I'm planning on stitching this one and then sending it to my sister because she really loved this one. And so that is what that looks like. It's a very Christmassy scene with the manger and Joseph and Mary over there. And I just really liked the little church. I thought it was super cute. It reminds me of the churches, a lot of the churches that we have here in Texas. And so this is a pretty small one. Uh, this is chart number six. So I'm guessing that there's probably another, there's probably other buildings in this series. It's probably a little village. Um, this one is part of the Pattern of the Month series from Stony Creek Collection. This is called the Happy Haunting Sampler. It was a 2019 pattern. And so if you get all of the patterns, that's what it will look like there. But that is the one that is actually in this one pattern. So I really liked this. I thought it was kind of fun. It would be really cute to get done for Halloween and be able to get it hung up. I need a lot of these are seasonal and I honestly just want to do them so that I can hang them on the wall back here. So as you can see, I put a lot of work into my little backdrop there. I was inspired by, <coughs> excuse me, Priscilla and Chelsea uh, from Stitching with the Housewives. And so they have that, Priscilla's got that great hutch behind her that she redecorates for every season. Well, I don't have a hutch and I don't have room to put a hutch in my apartment. So I have created my little backdrop over here and I didn't, I've still got to get some fairy lights. It needs fairy lights, but I have redecorated for Christmas over here. So I hope you guys enjoy some of that's homemade. Most of it is purchased. Um, but either way, so I've been inspired back here. Okay. And this Bon Appetit is going to be done on this 28 count Jobelin in the color Lazy River. I bought this off of a resell group. I really like this. It's not, it's a little more green in person than it's coming across on the screen, but I just really, really liked this. It's different. It's a different kind of color and I don't know what it was, but I bought it and I was just like, I got it and I liked it even better in person than I did on the computer and it's not something that I would feel like I would be drawn to but I just really like this color and the uh, one that I was stitching the bed and breakfast on that is probably my favorite fabric that is stormy night Lugana it has made me absolutely fall in love with Lugana now this is a Jobelin so I'm excited to see if I like the Jobelin as much as I like the Lugana because I really think I'm going to um, like I said earlier, I think even weaves are going to be my jam. I really do. I'm there. It's hard to explain because even though it's a higher count, you can still see the holes in it. Like you do your Ada fabric. It's super easy to see where you're supposed to be, but it gives you that finer linen look when you're finished, which is what I really am drawn to, but I'm not like, I like linen, but I don't love linen. And so I really love 
the Stephen Weave. <laughs> so, I know, it's a whole thing. I'm a mess. It's okay. Okay, what is next? So, this is some more leftover Christmas fabric that I've had for a very long time. So, I made these little pouches. I started making pouches for the smaller patterns um, instead of the big bags. Because, obviously, this if it fits in here, it doesn't need a huge bag in it until... I actually start to get, you know, get it in a Q-snap if I'm going to do it in a Q-snap. Now, I'm trying to get better at stitching in hand. I'm still having issue keeping my tension consistent when I stitch in hand. Um, I did do my thankful one, which I don't think is over here. I think it's laying on the back of the couch. Um, the little Lizzie Kate thankful, grateful, thankful, blessed. I did stitch it completely in hand. And so I got a little bit better at it as I went. And then that Santa Claus is coming to town. I stitched part of that in hand. And it's not as bad. It doesn't look as bad as it used to. I'm still not a fan because it makes my hand hurt, my holding hand. Holding the fabric gets my hand starts cramping up sooner than when I hold my Q-snaps. So I may just have to get like a six by six Q-snap and use it for the smaller projects and that may be my solution to the issue but let's get back to it okay so this is a country cottage needlework this is called snow sampler now i absolutely love this pattern i when i purchased this did not realize how much i didn't like stitching in white because my stitches do not look good in white um it's not a very forgiving color, uh, at least for me. Even railroading, my stitches don't lay as nice as they do in other colors. So this is the pattern. It's a very simple, um, monotone type of a pattern, but I really just really, really like it. I like the simplicity. I like that it's not overly Christmas to me this reminds me more of like a winter type pattern than a Christmas pattern and I guess I could get it close enough you could actually read the words um so I'm on the fence about this pattern because I'm not sure if I will enjoy stitching it in the white or not now this is done on a 28 count I'm pretty sure this is an even weave um it is a gorgeous gray color I think this might actually be too light for this pattern I'm hoping that you guys can see that is it doesn't have any modeling or anything in it it's just a solid very light gray color I think this may have to get moved into one of the Halloween patterns or something that has more color on the fabric than this white because I think this white I may have to go with a darker gray color or maybe a blue I think that would be really pretty on like a navy blue um so this is another one of those things that I haven't quite decided yet but this fabric is yes I'm gonna use the fabric for something let's put it that way so that's what we have there let me slide this back in so this is gonna go over into the maybe pile because I just I'm just kind of on the fence about it. So let me, there's my maybe pile up here. All right, let's see what we have. So this is a little gingerbread. Some more fabric that I had. All the Christmas fabric, or most of the Christmas fabric is stuff that I've had. Um, I bought it in college to make a Christmas quilt out of. The top is finished. I have not batted it or done the back. I have the batting laying over there. It's a huge roll of batting. And I really just need to take the time to put it together. So... Yeah. Okay, so we have two Lizzie Cates in this bag. Um, this one is called Snow Friends, and this is part of a series called the Six Fat Men series. Um, the other ones are also super cute like this. I really like these small Lizzie Cates because as much as I love big projects, when I do these, I actually feel like I can accomplish something. I'm getting something done. And so... My only concern, of course, is with all of this white fill again. And I realize Christmas patterns are going to have a lot of white. And I'm going to have to just figure out how to deal with it and do better with it. 
But this is one of the first small ones that I purchased. This was purchased off of a buy sell group. And so here's the rest of the series. If I can keep my arm still so that the camera can focus. So I apologize for the shaking. Um, and then this is Lizzie Kate's socks and underwear. This is a Santa 2010 snippet. And this has always been the running joke in our family is when you stop believing in Santa, you get socks and underwear. Because all the adults always got socks and underwear. And so, and I like that Santa, he's got the striped shirt on with his overall or his um, suspenders and things like that. So I really thought that one was a very cute one. Um, I have not started either one of these. Um, I do have 14 count tea dyed. I've got some linen in here, which will probably get changed out for an Ada or an even weave, but I think the color is really good. So that may be some of my projects that I do during winter. I would think dyeing things would be good in winter other than the drying. So I may have to figure out how to do like a little clothesline or something in the house. Okay, so this is a snowman bag, which I still like. These fabrics, I still enjoy these fabrics. And then it's just got a really pretty green on the inside. This is the Waxing Moon Designs, A Sparkly Christmas. Um, and it says, Christmas is too sparkly, said no one ever. I did not like the background fabric that they chose for this one. I like the colors, the fun of the colors. I think I'm going to do mine a little bit more vibrant. Do more of like a retro Christmas style that's been popular the last few years with the turquoises and the reds and the lime greens. And I have this bright red Ada. It's Loops and Threads brand, which is a Michaels brand. And it's a 14 count Ada and it is bright Christmas red. So I may or may not do it on this fabric. This is what I had in my stash. I bought this a couple years ago. The first time that I tried cross stitching, I had bought this fabric um, because I loved the color. And um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this pattern on this fabric or if I'm going to pick something or maybe dye something different. Haven't decided yet. So I do want to stitch the pattern. So it's not going to go in the maybe pile. It's just going to hang out for a hot minute down there. Okay. So this next one is one of my favorite ones that I found this year. This is Little House Needleworks Farmhouse Christmas Little Red Barn. And so this is part one of a nine part series. And so it is the barnyard. It's got the little sheep. This one I probably should have started. And this may be my next start. Um, even though I don't really need to start anything new, I need to finish some of this stuff. This one, I just absolutely love it. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So it does have quite a bit of white um, around it. I love the border. I don't know if you can see the border on this all the way around. Just, yes, it gives me all the feels. And then, of course, it's got the little red barn. And the sheep. They're so cute. So, I also have some linen to do this on. This is not the fabric I will be using um, because I've decided I don't particularly care for linen. So, I'll probably be getting um, a large batch of um, Lugana, I'm thinking, um, in white and then just dyeing it as I need it. I really like Lugana. I really like Lugana. Okay. Another one of these bags and in here we have, oh yeah, um, Country Cottage Needleworks Ornamental Joy. This is another one. I just, you guys, I've done a pretty good job picking out patterns. Not to toot my own horn, I'm pretty proud of myself for picking patterns that I still want to stitch. So this is what this one looks like. I know I've seen several people on Instagram Finish this one and it is so pretty when it is finished. So, and I love the colors. I love the difference. I don't love this thing at the bottom, but I can always leave that off. It's your pattern. You can do what you want, right? 
So yeah, so that is Ornamental Joy. This is, calls for 28 count lamb's wool linen courtesy of Vichelt. Um, again, I probably won't be doing it on that particular fabric. I do have, however, some tea dyed 28 count cashel to do this on. Now, I think I might enjoy this linen a little bit better because it's a very stiff linen. And so I may like this a little better. The holes are fairly easy to see on this. So I'm going to give this casual a try. And again, if I'm not a fan, then I'll pass it on to one of my other stitchy friends. But I think I may like the casual because it's a little bit stiffer. It holds its shape a little bit better. It's not so stretchy like the other linens that I've worked on are because they're super soft. Um, this may be my linen choice. So I'm going to keep that in there with that pattern I think that's the perfect color for that pattern too so that was all all of the stuff unless I bought it very few things have I bought brand new completely new most of it I've gotten from buy and sell groups because one of the things that I've really enjoyed about cross stitch this year is it can be as expensive or as cheap as you choose for it to be so you know this year of course we had I had some extra money because we weren't going to work for like a month and so you weren't eating out or I wasn't eating out and doing some of those kinds of things you know gas and all of that stuff and so I was able to buy more this year than I probably normally would and it was something where I was getting started in the craft and so I wanted to have all the things <laughs> and then I've had some friends very much bless me this year okay so this doesn't seem to have anything in it but it's another little pouch that I made it's a Halloween one I found this at one of the fabric stores and just bought a fat quarter of it and absolutely love it. And then on the inside, it's got this really pretty orange splotch with a glitter in it. So it goes really well with that fabric. So I have one of those. All right. This, oh, this was a, a throwaway project. So if you remember my Santa Claus is coming to town, this was the original start on it on linen and you can tell I absolutely hated it because I quit. <laughs> the other one has a lot more in it. So this was the original on linen. Uh, the stitching does not look great as you can tell if I get it up close. You can see lots of mistakes in there and that's okay because that's a, that was a learning situation um, where I was learning what I liked and what I didn't like. I'm sorry if you can hear the bumping from the ceiling because the puppy must be out playing. My neighbor has a puppy upstairs. We've talked about it. I'm not a fan. <laughs> not of the dog, but of the noise. Okay, so this one was one that I was going to start in November, but that Lizzie Kate took me a lot longer than I thought it would because I was doing diamond painting and other things. So this is called Gobble Till You Wobble. It's by the Sunflower Seed, which was out of Topeka, Kansas at one point. This looks like a much older pattern. I don't know if this is still available. It calls for a 28 count light linen. But that is what that looks like there. It is a super cute pattern. I will be doing this one um, probably next November because it doesn't look that complicated, but of course those are the ones that always hang me up. I'm like, oh yeah, I can finish that in like two weeks. I can't, don't even try. Doesn't look like I have a fabric set aside for this, but I have started setting aside some floss. So, and I just have this in a bag, makeup bag basically. So as I said, I need to go through and reorganize a whole bunch of stuff see if I have anything in this one no that is an empty bag good okay so it looks like there's a couple in here these are some more Christmas patterns I did buy quite a few Christmas ones this year um, there were some that I did not buy that I really am in love with uh, there's one by Jardine Purvey 
I don't remember the name of it, but it is, it was done on like a red fabric with all white stitching and I was just, I needed it so bad and I resisted and I'm very proud of myself for resisting because I may go back and get it in the future. I liked it that much. So this one is a Country Cottage Needleworks Christmas Cheer. This is another very small one. Um, I really think this is one that I could finish if I sat down and really focused on it. I could probably do it in a week, maybe two, if I, you know, kind of slack off a little bit. But I think I could do this one fairly quickly and then make it into a little ornament. I just love this one. It's super cute. I really like the Country Cottage and the Little House Needleworks, the little Christmas ones that they have. They're very cute. They're easy. They're good for beginners. And so I may have to come back to that one. Had some more linen set aside. Don't think that's going to happen. The next one in here is another Christmas one that really appealed to me. This is by Abbey Rose Designs. I really like the old-fashioned nature of this one. It just reminds me of an old-fashioned Christmas. I love the font that they used for this. And then just the simple mistletoe. Well, that's not even mistletoe. That's berries. That's holly berries. Um, mistletoe has white berries. But absolutely love this one. I'm trying to think, is there a name on this pattern? there is it might be on the inside I don't want to open the thing so yeah so this is another one that would be pretty quick to do I think in here is also this one now this is one this is one that I bought I don't think I'll end up stitching this one um, it appealed to me at the time again this is before I stitched in white and so I still think this one is super cute and I'm sure somebody will want to do this one. It's called Snow Wonderful. Now that border around the outside gives me life. I absolutely love the border and the snowflake in the center. Not such a big fan of the corners, even though they're like quilt patterns. But yeah, so I think this one is one maybe I can take elements from, like I can do the snowflake and then put the border around it or, you know, do a little line of these snowmen maybe. But I probably wouldn't stitch it exactly as it is on the pattern, if that makes sense. I would probably just take elements out of it and use that to make my own pattern. And then this one is Yankee Doodles. This is another Lizzie Kate. This is one that when I saw this, so many of you guys have done this one. Y'all are probably like, you were real far behind to catch up. But this is one that I really enjoyed it every time that I see it. It's got three patterns in it. And it is the little Lizzie Kate. I loved the, um, these little guys here, the little firecrackers. And then of course they used them again over here. And then the little flag. So this is some of the patriotic stuff. I did start getting some patriotic stuff there towards the end of my buying spree. Um, so that I would have different options throughout the year. So my goal for 2021 is to finish the whips that I've started. And to try not to buy anything else. Try. If you do buy something else, or if I do buy something else, I'm going to try to limit it to one pattern a month. That is the goal. So now, obviously, I'm going to have to buy fabric because I don't have fabric for some of these. I'll end up buying floss. I'm sure I'll have to buy needles at some point. But I'm really going to try to limit my spending to, you know, one thing a month. Um, whether that is a pattern, whether that's a piece of fabric. Something along those lines. Um, I would really like to buy some bulk fabric and then be able to dye it as I need it or cut it as I need it and use it that way. So I did buy some bulk Ada um, when I was getting all of this stuff and I'm still using the same piece because it was like a yard of Ada fabric that I got for very reasonably priced. And so some of it I've dyed, some of it I haven't. Just used it as the white Ada. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I really enjoyed it. Either way. Okay. So this is Snow Village. And it is, um, I've got the 
floss pack from what are they called good lord i know y'all are yelling it at me i know you are snow village it is by country cottage needlework i got the um thing from that one store <laughs> sorry <laughs> all of this will be in the description box below so that is what snow village looks like this is the main centerpiece of the village um I still have a lot to do on this one. Um, now, this main part, I've got finished. I need to go in and put in the snowflakes, I believe, and then do the back stitching for the banner where these would be hung on the, you know, on the wires. But I did get this one finished. Did I get the faces in? Yeah. So this is also picture this plus fabric in the color title. I think it's a 14 count, but don't quote me on that. I've said it, I've talked about it before. I really gotta write this stuff down because now I'm forgetting. Um, but yeah, so this is what I have done on this one. I will be doing some of the other village pieces as well. So yeah, I enjoyed this one. It wasn't bad. Some of these trees are charted a little funky for me. I didn't stick exactly to the pattern to chart those. Um, this might be a good January project to work on. Um, it'll be kind of seasonal since it's not necessarily Christmas, but it's still snow. So, um, yeah, that's, that's another one that I'll finish. These village ones, I didn't think would take as long as they do, but I know that I'm a slower stitcher than a lot of other people, and I have a lot of other projects to work on as well. Um, I've gotten back into the diamond painting a little bit more than I expected I would um, after having taken such such a long break. But um, like over here on the desk, I've got the Mandy Manzano the 10th by Diamond Art Club. And then um, I had also started on one of the ones that we got from Crafty Mint for the retreat. So now this one is the project that started it all. Um, Rachel Ray had posted on her channel this time last year, a little earlier than this time last year, um, that she was working on the Stuart Cunningham Letters to Hogwarts or Letters from Hogwarts. I can't remember which way it is. Um, <laughs> I, as a birthday present to myself, I went and kitted all this up. I got all the fabric and the floss and you needed a lot of floss for this one. And then as I went on, I got a little more intimidated and found other projects that I wanted to work on and just really have not given this hardly any time at all. Um, the owl is pretty rough because it is some of the first that I did. I ended up really disliking the fabric color of this fabric. I think if I choose to do this one, I will eventually do it on a different color fabric. Um, I'm not going to scrap what I already have. I think I'm going to try to finish Hogwarts Castle and maybe like just do a small banner type of a thing for the work that I already have put into it. Because like you can see, I've got the swirls done and all of that. And I just need to finish this half of Hogwarts Castle. Um, the windows are going to be filled in with glow-in-the-dark thread, which I already have. I just need to do it. So maybe I need to as a homage to starting this last January, this January, maybe I can give it and just try to get the top done. So you can see it would go over to here on the border. So if I can just get that top section done, I think I'd be happy with that for now. And then if I decide to go back to this project later, I can um, come back to it and redo it on a different fabric but yeah the one that started it all that started my cross stitch journey I have not done it it's due diligence for sure okay we're gonna speed up just a little bit because I have actually talked for almost an hour I'm very proud um, I have a couple more I think so this one is a Texas retreat exclusive not my retreat it's a stitching retreat the DFW retreat. Um, this is called the Lone Star Stitchers. It's by T Twin 
Peaks Primitive. And I'm sure a lot of you will remember this one as well. Now, I am doing this one on linen. Um, I'm not hating this linen, which is a good thing because I've got quite a bit of work in this already. So, as you can see, I'm about uh, maybe a quarter of the way done. I am going to tear this white out here because you cannot see it and stitch that probably in the red or the blue because I think it would look better. And then I just need to finish the border here and then put in the um, blue banner. So that's where we're at on that. So that's another one that I need to come back to. And let's see, I think all of these are empty. What do we have in here? I believe these are copies and then some exclusives from Stitch Life Magazine. So you guys, that is what I have for you today. Um, I want to say thank you again so much for joining me today. As always, I appreciate it every time that somebody takes time out of their day to spend time with me. Um, time is one of my love languages. So I know when you guys watch a video or when you come to a live or something like that or something that I host, I'm always so appreciative of it. Even if I don't say it, just know it really really touches my heart. Um, so yeah, so there's all of that. That is the stitching that I have. Um, I do have some, I think I've got some on the computer as well. I didn't print those or worry about those or anything like that. I've got some in the binder up there even. I've got some more patterns that I didn't even pull out for you guys. We are kind of running out of time, so it's okay. Um, I'm going to put a little message on the end there, but if you liked what you saw today and you are not subscribed and you would like to see more stitching, more diamond painting, more wreath making, more crafts, whatever it is that I decide to do, sewing, all of the things, um, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, give me a thumbs up, please. So those are always appreciated so that it gives me feedback on how I'm doing. Um, if you do hit that subscribe button, don't forget to hit that cowbell down there because everybody needs more cowbell in their lives. And until I see you next time, I hope you all have a very happy holiday season, whatever holidays that you choose to celebrate or not celebrate. Um, I hope that everyone is careful, everyone is as healthy as you possibly can be, and that we get to see more of you in the new year. Um, so until I see you all again next time, happy cross stitching, happy diamond painting, until we meet again, you guys.